Hi everybody, it's Maxine Taylor with um, a special edition of my Trumpology Report. Today I'm going to talk with you about Christine Blasey Ford. Um, we do not have a birth time for her, but thanks to Janice Davis and Wikipedia, uh, we have her birthday, which is November 28th. 1966. So those of you born in 66, or let's just say mid 60s, are part of her karmic group. You have the Uranian Plutonian conjunction, uh, which is so powerful, the Pluto Uranus conjunction. Um, and while I, I do not have her time of birth, and I hope at some point we will have it, I can give you a wonderful picture of this. Um, beautiful lady who gave testimony at the Kavanaugh hearings. Um, when I have finished, I have a special me special message for the women out there because um, Christine Ford's testimony yesterday really struck a chord with all of us. Uh, not yesterday, the other day, Friday. T struck a chord with us. And what I have learned over the years is that there have been many women who have been assaulted uh, as children or as adults. If it's adults, the propensity was there in childhood because of what I have dubbed the first sexual imprinting. I have a session that I offer for people to call Take Back Your Life. Uh, the first sexual imprinting is something I've named uh, I have never read anything about it. I have not written anything yet because the kind of imprinting I'm talking about is not overt, but it sets the stage for later assaults. And in my uh, counseling people for more than 50 years, what I have found is that many of us uh, have what I call the first sexual imprinting that has set the tone for later assaults because actual sex is not involved in that imprinting. We are not consciously aware of it, but we know something ain't right. And this is where I can come in and help you. So let's talk about Christine Blasey Ford, and then I will share a little more information with those of you who, when you just heard it, your ears perked up. Okay, if your ears perked up, if you're curious, you may be ready for my Take Back Your Life class. All right, it ends the victim role. All right. So let's talk about Christine Blasey Ford. Um, we only have her month, day, and year of birth, as I said, November 28, 1966. But even the solar chart is so revealing. I'm going to start with the first house. Uh, we always put the sun in the first house in the solar chart, of course. So she is a Sagittarian. Sagittarians love truth and honesty and freedom. When you are assaulted, you lose your freedom. You lose your life is what you do. Um, and the, the, the banner that every Sagittarian uh, waves, every Sag I know, is truth. Now, some of you are saying, well, Sagittarians can exaggerate. Yeah, that's true, they can. They use humor and uh, exaggeration uh, to tell the truth. And that's the truth. So we have a lady who comes from truth. And as she said, she wanted to be, she felt a, a, a civic duty to come forward and share her experience as a 15 year old, her, her sexual experience with Kavanaugh. Okay. She has Venus in Sag. Uh, for those of you studying astrology in the noon ephemeris, her son is five Sag 48. 
Our Venus is 10 Sag 37. Venus is what we love, what we think is beautiful. And uh, conjunct the sun, we are able to love ourselves. If you can love yourself, you can love the world. Uh, what I have found in people who love themselves is they are able to forgive. They um, love, they give the same amount of uh, love and honesty to other people that they themselves have for themselves. It's absolutely wonderful. And her Mercury, what we think about, 17 Sag, let me put my glasses on here so I can give it to you. 17 Sag 23. So she thinks like a Sagittarian. She got the three planets, three out of 10, in Sag, meaning this is a woman of truth. There's nothing else to say. That's how she is. It's just beautiful. And you could see the sun conjunct Venus adds a sweetness. And, and she, you could see her sweetness. You could feel her sweetness. Uh, she had no hidden agenda. She was there uh, willingly, willing to cooperate. So moving down to Saturn in, in uh, 22 Pisces 53. Excuse me, 55, 23, 22 Pisces, 55 in her um, fourth house. Now, Saturn in Pisces is a, a, a tricky placement. Saturn is reality and Pisces is the dream. Saturn says, look at that dream realistically. Let's shatter it. Let's, let's be tough with it. And so poor little Pisces is saying, but I want to dream a dream. And so combining the two, you take your dream and make it real. Saturn in her fourth house indicates a, a great feeling of responsibility, meaning respond to your ability with family. One of the parents was uh, a should and ought to parent. Uh, there could have been an older relative's influence. I'm looking at the fourth house here uh, in her life, but, but one of the parents was more, more of the, um, I want to say a realistic dreamer, a combination of the two here but taught discipline. The other parent is the 10th house. And look at this 10th house. I'll cover all the others. I'm jumping around a little bit. Saturn is in opposition to her Pluto, Uranus, and Mars. Now, those of you born in this karmic group know what I'm, when I say this Pluto-Uranus conjunction is very powerful. Pluto is the planet of control. Now, this area is her public image. It's her career. Control, uh, getting to the nitty gritty, being a psychic detective, as it were. Well, she has a couple of degrees in psychology, advanced degrees in psychology, um, if I remember correctly. But Pluto is all or nothing. It knows that it wants to be in control in its career, because it's in the 10th house. Um, and it wants to let go of, it, of everything and, and start all over again, it being the phoenix rising on its own ashes. Um, but it can't do that, it can't let go because it is all or nothing. But it's right next to Uranus. Uranus is the rebel that says, bust loose, rebel, do it your way. And so the Pluto-Uranus conjunction, those of you who have it know exactly what I'm talking about. You want to bust loose and you can't do it because you know it will be annihilation if you do. And I think this is another reason why there is, was this fear, this terror at the very foundation of uh, Dr. Ford's life at the thought of going public with this because she was going to let it all hang out and she wasn't sure where the chips were going to fall and she was not interested uh, what she was interested in is the truth. I can't say what she's not. I can, I can say it, but it's my opinion based on the astrology chart. And I want to give you the chance to express yours, your opinion. So she shows up as being rather unconventional, unique, uh, maybe a little bit of a rabble rouser. And yet this sweet lady, her, her tone of voice, uh, everything about her, says the opposite of this. And her terror is, is very strong. Now Mars in Virgo. Mars is what, what comes first to us. 
of being an author authority figure, being in the limelight, um, very strong career ambitions. So we've got Mars conjunct Uranus, which can be quite volatile, and Pluto holding everything back. Pluto is the most elevated planet in this solar chart, and therefore it is the most powerful. I don't know if some of you know, the ruler of your ascendant is the ruler of the chart, but the most highly elevated planet in the chart is the strongest, and it's what because it's what the world sees of you. Okay. Now, her moon is in the seventh house We in Gemini. We don't have any degrees for the moon because we don't have a time of birth. However, let's just look at this grand square, shall we? She's got the uh, Pluto, Uranus, Mars, Mars fighting to move upward and be heard. She's got the three planets in Sagittarius. She's got Saturn in Pisces and the moon in Gemini. So she's got a grand square here. If the moon is within orb, if the moon is, oh, anywhere between 10 and, and uh, 29 of, um, well, 27 of um, Gemini. With a Gemini moon, there's a natural curiosity. And uh, with the moon in the seventh house, mommy's message is get married, get married, get married. Be out there one on one with people. Now, this uh, configuration up here in her 10th house shows the out front parent is very much like what I have described here, but Pluto is the matriarch. Pluto makes the rules for the family and there is a part of her that wants to break free from that at the same time that she hangs on to it uh, because she knows it once she lets a little bit go everything is going to unfold and that terror of not being the responsible one in the family in the home can surface so she's got a lot of mixed feelings as i think we're very self-evident now i haven't forgotten about the node the north node in the sixth house uh in now this is a true i don't know if this is a true node or yes it's a true node 16 taurus 11. so the greatest area of success and fulfillment in her life is working, serving. Well, she's got three planets in Virgo. She serves in her career, um, and she is happy to serve. Uh, uh, that was so clear during her testimony. Let's move across the chart to the South Node. The South Node is what we are instinctively drawn to because it's what we have mastered in past lives now in a solar chart uh it's a it's a different placement than in a, in a natal chart however it's in her her south node is in the 12th house the tendency to pull back and retreat to hide uh as was self-evident she's got the 10th house that wants to to be the leader she also has a gorgeous jupiter in her ninth house which i'll talk about in a minute um and Saturn that says, if you don't let go, don't let go, uh, be responsible for your family. So there are a lot of mixed messages with this grand square. So she wants to pull back and retreat. It is instinctive with her, especially since Neptune is conjunct in Scorpio, 22 Scorpio, 25. All of you in her karmic group have your Neptune in Scorpio, you know exactly how that manifests in your chart um, and so there is the idealization the desire to pull back and retreat there's a very spiritual orientation as well um, a divine protection as it were too so let's look at this beautiful jupiter in leo in her ninth house for leo 24. the ninth house is your higher mind it's higher education she is a professor she teaches uh, psychology, brain science, all that beautiful stuff. And in the ninth house, which is the natural placement for it in the zodiac, um, it wants truth above all else and is happy to teach. 
uh, Jupiter is God's law. Saturn is man's law. Here's her Saturn down here saying, I've got to protect my family. Here's Jupiter in her ninth house saying, I have to tell the truth. I want to soar. I want to expand my horizons. And so I think I've covered everything in her chart. When, if and when we get a birth time on her, I will, of course, redo her chart. I've done Kavanaugh's chart. Some of you have found it on uh, my Trumpology channel, on my YouTube uh, channel. I said channel twice. Uh, under the umbrella of my Trumpology report, I did Kavanaugh's chart a while back. Check it out. And, of course, now we have... Uh, Christine Blasey Ford's chart to compare to it. Um, I promised you that, excuse me, I have cat fur all over me. I promised you that I was going to share information for those of you who were deeply moved by Ford's testimony and those of you who have either been assaulted or feel that you have been with without even knowing without any proof without any memory of it on my website as i mentioned under the spiritual services tab there is one uh there is an offering for a session called take back your life it is very powerful it is a rocket ship and I've shared this with many people, and their lives have changed. Those who have continued to follow the technique that I have, which is very simple, find that their lives work. I have been my own lab rat, and I tell you, it works. This can, this Take Back Your Life session can cover money, love, health, all kinds of things. In this case, I'm talking about the first sexual imprinting. This occurred with many people, many women, men too, but as a woman, I can only speak to, about women to women for obvious reasons. The first sexual imprinting occurs when you're very, very young and sex is not involved. However, the sexual energy is there on the part of the perpetrator. It might take years of therapy to get to the bottom of that. Fortunately, I was my own lab rat. I was able to get the key piece and see how all the tiles tumbled from then on. If you have felt in a moment of intimacy feelings uh, that you couldn't put your finger on, you didn't understand, it may very well be that you have been the victim of an, a non-sexual sexual assault and that's what I'm talking about that was my experience and I've worked with women for years and it was their experience as well <clears throat> I'm here to tell you that you can see it face it and let it go and that's what I help you do so if this feels like something you'd like to talk with me about please do my website is Maxine Taylor I'm here to serve. This is the greatest piece of information I've ever shared. And this is the first time I have done this. I'm here to serve you. So, I think that's what I came here to say. I look forward to speaking with you and serving you and helping you. And so till we meet again, May the stars shine brightly on you and yours. Bye for now.